guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. I wasn't sure if I was going to do another video, at least this week, on the Rudy situation. I have a lot of mixed feelings on it because I'm not sure where the truth is where the lies are and what exactly is going on uh i i like to my opinion is at this point i believe i'm believing rudy that he was manipulated and beyond that i'm not really sure you know it's it's such a weird strange case of a missing person who really wasn't missing. Um, so, uh, Grizzy, she was able to interview Rudy and she has posted a two-part video, which I'm going to show and discuss and of course link to her, uh, because she really has been the one who has gotten a lot of the inside scoops on this case. Uh, she's obviously local to the area and she's, uh, a major uh, creator, uh, for, I guess, journalist in that area, her own. So I'm um, going to play that a bit of that. And he, she does have him pixelated and blurred out. I'm not really sure why, but, you know, to each his own, and that's his right. So uh, let's check that out. How you feeling? Good. Yeah. It's a little sick. I think I just kind of got a cold or something. But other than that, I'm good. happy here. Well, um, we probably need you to talk really loud just because it's phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. It's just, um, it's a little struggle. My throat's kind of sore. I understand. <laughs> oh, actually, it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Rudy, how are you 25? Um, what is it? 26. My age and dates and times. So sometimes it's a little hard for me to keep track, especially if I don't have phones or anything. You know, it's a little difficult. You know, what? if we keep the door a little open, it's helpful with the light. That could work. If you want to hold this right there. Are you shocked at how much attention this is yeah, getting? Yeah, it's a lot of attention. It kind of gets me overwhelmed. You know. Not, you know, I just try to stay positive, you know, just try to keep my mentality straight and honest and true and just spread positivity and kindness, you know. So, the world thought you were missing for eight years. Where where were you? Where have you been? Uh, just at home. Just stuck at home, you know. If somebody would come over, my mom would just tell me, stay in the room, you know. Keep the door locked. Don't let them in. Don't make any sounds. Don't do anything, you know. Tell us about what it was like living there. Were you allowed to leave the room? Was she holding you there against your will? She never, like, locked me in or, you know, like, handcuffed me or anything like that. You know, I had free will to leave. It's just, it just felt like brainwashing, honestly. Like, it just, it just kept confusing me just the way, you know, she would manipulate me into saying, like, oh, you're going to get arrested because you have a speeding ticket or something, like something minor, something innocent, and then it would just... And then it was just gonna escalate into just people just sorry. Just, You're it's good. Okay. Which is um, take your time. Yeah, it just escalated from there, from you know just wanting to get away from home, just be free, live my own life, arguing all the time, and then we eventually just went into just she locked me in there pretty much mentally, just that she was my only parent, she was the only person I really had besides my brother. So when I lost my brother, I didn't have anybody to teach me how to live, you know, how to have confidence or trust in myself or anything, you know. So I just depended on my mom all my life. What had you been doing for those eight years? Just um, trying to study the best I can online, you know, understand how the world works, you know, understand different cultures, different religions, different everything, because 
my life, I just believe that we should stop putting labels on everything and just understand the communities and the prosperity and the growth and the positivity because there's just too much fighting, there's too much anger, there's too much depression and mental health problems in the world. We, yeah, we just, we just need to spread more positivity because all of it, everything around us, it's just... It's an algorithm that they control through the social media and through the colors and just everything. You know, like if you see something white, like a white wall or a white pillowcase or a white car driving around the place, you know, you will, you'll just understand that like you're just trying to have a positive thought and then you'll look at something white and get sidetracked and you'll get distracted about stuff and things and then you'll find stuff like a pink wall or something or pink whatever and then you just be reminded of, you know, somebody trying to help you, prosperity, you know, just somebody loving people, and red, people confuse that for anger or hate, and it's only anger or hate, these type of things, if you look at it that way, you know. You know, police said a lot of times that you were 17 when this happened, and you were an adult. You spoke a little bit about this, about some of the family um, trauma you've had growing up. Talk about the fact that although you're an adult, how difficult it was for you to be in this situation and maybe not be able to get out of. It, just, it felt like Stockholm Syndrome, honestly. Like, just held against my will mentally, not physically, just constantly, like, she was bombarding me with negative thoughts. And, like, every time I come around her, she just makes me... It's like little triggers just pop up, and it's like if I'm trying to get away from my mom, I'll hear a random noise, and it'll be like a little reminder in my head, like don't do that, don't say this, or you know, just little things like she's putting ideas or thoughts into my head whenever I'm just trying to, you know, just understand the world. Do you think your mom took advantage of you? Heavily. How does that feel? I mean, I can't imagine. You said your mom is really the only person in your family you have. How was that that you felt? Your own mom took advantage. It was. It's like I lived in a prison. It's like I lived in a fucking jail my whole life. I just wanted to be free. I wanted to have my own job. I just. I just wanted to live my life. I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to. Um, just love somebody. You know, have somebody else who would actually love me. Because I wasn't sure what love was. I struggled with understanding my emotions. I don't know when I'm sad and that I'm sending out negative energy. I don't understand when I'm happy and sending out positive energy. I just, the only way I was under understanding how to communicate with people was online. And even then, you can't trust everything you see online because half the time people are just making their own assumptions and spinning what they want. And it's just, I can't ever speak my truth because everybody wants to assume things. Can you go into the brainwashing? What would she say to you? Would she say something would happen if you were to leave her home? It wasn't that. It's just, after I left, I started to understand that all of it's just an algorithm. It's literally all an algorithm. If you look at something black, you understand that they understand. If you look at something white, it'll confuse you when you're trying to go in a positive direction. If you look at something red, it'll remind you of love. If you look at green, it'll remind you of, you know, like grounding people that are there for you and stuff, you know? Did, did you feel stuck? And, and what was she doing exactly that kept you hidden? It's just every time I would try to leave or, you know, try to do things for myself. Like, I want to go get my own money. I want to go work a different job. I want to do this and that. They would always just come right back around to just don't do that or it's bad. Don't do that. You know, like, the cops are going to come out. They're going to do this. They're going to arrest you if you're driving the car without a license or this and that. And it's just like, well, how do you expect me to get a license to drive a car if I can't even go out? Why do you, all I do is work 12 hour shifts seven days a week and I get 60 fucking dollars like I don't understand how that's fucking fair why do you think she wanted to keep you hidden I, I don't know it all started just because I had a fucking speeding ticket I went like 70 and 55 trying to go to work and then when that all started it's just like I wasn't able to have a life I was starting to start working and growing and you know provide for myself and then after that happened I just I couldn't do it I, I think the question everyone has is why your mom would lie and say that you've been missing for eight years did she ever tell you did you ever ask mom why are we pretending that 
I'm missing. That's the thing. When it comes to little small details like that, I just can't, I don't remember. It's like it just blocks it out. Like she's blocking it out for me or something. It's like I just, I just want to remember the facts. I just want to understand, you know, who I am and what I'm trying to do and just try to live my life the way I want to, not how she wants me to. Were you questioning your mom? Like, mom, why am I doing this? Yeah, I would always ask her stuff like, when am I going to get a job? When am I going to have my own car? When am I going to be able to make my own decisions? When am I going to be able to just go out and be free? Like, why can't we just go to the fucking police station? Why can't I just get a lawyer? Why can't I just do that? And she's like, oh, you can't get a lawyer because it's too much money. We can't do that because it's too much money. Everything was always just money, 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 money. It's a constantly fucking money. If you had to guess why she was doing this, was she making money from you being missing, as far as you know? I don't know. I think somebody at one point mentioned something about an original GoFundMe page. And then she, my mom, wanted to say something about, like, one of my aunts or something was, like, stole all the sodas or some shit. But meanwhile, where's all the money that they raised, you know? Like, and where did that go to helping find me? I'm a little confused about what he's talking about, about colors and pink, and that kind of throws me off a bit. I'm not really exactly sure what he means by that. He's obviously a very intelligent, intelligent person. So all that crap that his mom was putting out about how he's uh, nonverbal and all that, yeah, he's... He is a smart guy, and he's, somehow he's been taken advantage of, and I, I'm trying to believe that she did all this to him, and he just was never a part of the scam, but again, we don't know at this point, you know, was he ever a part of it? I... I it's just, I can't, I just can't decide if, if he really ended up being a part of it. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think he's completely innocent and she totally uh, brainwashed him and abused him in whatever ways? I mean, we're not going to need to get into the details um, as far as that's concerned. But, I mean, do you think that that's all, that's all true? Uh, there is a second part. I'm going to link to it. That way um, you guys can go over to uh, Grizzy and check that out. I am going to uh, play. She went over to the house and into the backyard. And there was some crazy, crazy stuff that she discovered. And remember how the family stated when they went to go visit their mom which was uh which would be Rudy's Rudy's excuse me Rudy's grandmother it would take Janie like 20 minutes to come to the door so stories of him having to go out some trap door which is what what was discovered and and kind of hide in the woods that seems to be uh seems to be true mom was never lying never So this is directly behind Rudy Farias' home. Um, part of what we suspect is that when his family would come by, Rudy was made to come back here into the woods. And there is, you know, while, while she would prepare and, and hide any evidence of him still living there, while the aunts waited outside because they'd come to check on their mother who Janie had. And so he was made to come back here, according to a lot of, you know, the people we've talked to. And you can see like signs like big hands. You can see uh, cranberry juice, just like even take out uh, rotisserie chicken. Really, really crazy stuff. Oh no, let's see. All the trash pee buckets too we, we saw some pee buckets just very sad man cans
I guess she was sending him back here every time family members came by. There's a little bridge right there you can sit on. A little cooler over there. You can see everything. Look. Look, rotisserie chicken. Like, hey, go eat outside. A lot of... All right, I'm gonna slow this down. Do you guys see that car right there? Somebody came and picked it up after I left and I came back to show you guys. So that was definitely interesting to me that Grizzy went out there and she's one brave soul because that looked like some nasty area to be walking in and gosh knows if there's snakes or whatever out there. But it looks like someone was out there eating and hanging out. And so, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of this, a lot of Rudy's story does seem, does seem true. I just don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of details that, that have to come together. And the Houston Police Department doesn't seem to be too on any of this. Definitely, as far as arresting anyone, but we shall see. We shall see if uh, if Mama Janie truly has done any of this stuff, and she should definitely be arrested for something. But I'm hoping that they're they're truly not done with this investigation, and I really hope that they that they just don't completely drop the ball 100% on all this all this stuff because they did drop the ball on so many things in the last eight years as far as Rudy's concerned. Like they had family tips, that he was at the home. It just seems like they didn't try hard enough to look for Rudy. I'm usually very pro-police, okay? I'm very for the blue. So I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that all this waiting is them trying to get their ducks in a row. It's frustrating as hell, but I have to hope that there's detectives that are going to do, that are going to do something. That's all I can hope for. Because this young man, he, he deserves better than this. And the truth, the truth all needs to come out. You know, again, like I said previously, we don't need to know all the details. That's, that's Rudy's story. But we do need to know the extent of the scams and deceptions and everything that Janie had. She has so, so many profiles on Facebook which have since been deleted. Lying to her family, to friends. GoFundMe, which I hear they're going to be going after her. So there's so much, so much crap that she, she's a part of. So... Again, I guess we're going to see. But what do you guys think of uh, this backyard that Grizzy uh, was able to explore? And uh, what Rudy had to say. Again, there is a part two. And I'm linking that in the uh, information of the video. So please do check out her Facebook page. Uh, she's a local um, you know, news reporter. Uh, Grizzy Hood News. It's very well known in that area in Texas, Houston, Texas. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.